Hey, what's up? What's up, YouTube? Uh, so, I just wanted to make a quick video uh, right now. I'm in my studio, so you're getting like a sneak peek of what I got going on. I'll be making like a full uh, studio tour uh, once I get, once I finish up my mastering chain. Um, but what I wanted to do is make a video about the importance of buying high quality cables so you can see I'm working with the uh, Yamaha HS5s back there. And so now when I originally got them, got them from Guitar Center one night, of course, you know, I want to try them out. Um, in my, in my, in my setup, I have nothing, but, nothing but Megami Gold cables running through um, that particular day. Uh, the, my Guitar Center didn't have any um, Megami Gold. So I got like some little cheap rolling uh, TRS balance cables to run, you know, my monitors to my interface. And man, like today I had to go to Guitar Center and um, finally get those replaced with some Megami Gold uh, balance cables because I couldn't even have like my phone in the, the studio without my speakers crackling and popping, just turning them on, a uh, ton of noise uh, coming through the speakers. So I had to get those um, changed out. And, you know, I was wondering like, man, I wonder if it's even gonna make a difference, but it absolutely did. Um, I mean, it even, I'm not even gonna lie, it definitely improved sound quality a little bit, but the, the uh, resilience of the signal uh, it's really strong uh, now. So I just wanted to make a quick video just talking about, you know, don't cheap out when it comes to your cables, your cables and, uh, you know, your accessories and really get the best gear um, that you can afford as well. Uh, because you may not think you may not think you need it, but in our reality, it makes it makes a big difference. It makes a big difference in sound quality um and the overall end result of your uh, mix and song uh, when you use you know outboard preamp outboard compressor good quality mic i mean you got to invest in these things um because it improves quality and you know how i had to start thinking about it is like this like if you're a new artist I'm gonna say you're a new rapper. Why would, you know, a potential fan stop listening to whoever their favorite art artist is? Let, let's say Drake. Why would they take their precious time to listen to your music and not Drake's if your music can't even compete or compare in quality alone? We're not even talking about the actual you know, uh, enjoyment level of the song itself and the skill uh, put into the song itself. Like, do you have direct level skill? That's that's a whole nother story. But do you can do you even have decent quality? Not even decent quality, but professional quality recordings for potential fans to hear. And that's got that's how you got to think about it. So, like, if you can't even match quality you damn sure won't be able to match skill. That's what the consumer is thinking. That's how I think. Uh, so you got to think about it in those terms. Like, so if, you know, whatever type of music you make, um, you have to match, meet or exceed the quality and craftsmanship of the artist in your particular niche. Without that, how can you have a, how do you expect to have like a successful, you know, music business without being able to, without being able to compete? So uh, just some food for thought. Um, let's invest, let's scale up, let's keep getting better. Um, I want to keep making more videos. I, I really appreciate uh, all the comments. Um, that you guys leave. 
Um, I read every, I try to read all of them and respond to all of them as I, as I see them on my phone. Uh, notifications are kind of weird with this YouTube stuff for some reason. I like, they like blend in with my normal, just YouTube subscriber notifications. Uh, so sometimes I don't see them. So if I'm late to replying or anything, that's the reason why. Uh, but yeah, man, I want to thank you all for watching. Um, invest in good cables, invest in good equipment, period. Um, I'm also going to be making some more videos about like budget uh, vocal chain equipment. So like uh, budget um, compressors, budget preamps, um, even budget microphones too. I mean, I know it's a ton of those out there, but like I like, I don't like using the same equipment as everybody else. Like, it's, I mean, some things are just gold and standard, like as far as equipment goes. Um, but but like for certain things we can switch up, like microphones. I feel like microphones are really to taste. Like my your voice may not sound good on the type of mics I like, and vice versa. My voice may not sound good on the type of microphones that you like. Um, I prefer like a brighter, a shinier microphone, which you kind of see back there. Not, and I'm not talking about the actual external or aesthetics of it. I'm talking about the the frequency response of it. If you don't know what I'm talking about, look up microphone frequency responses. Um, that'll give you um, a really good baseline as to what type of microphone uh, that you kind that you're kind of uh, envisioning in your mind. You know that you want your voice to sound like because it has a, a big impact on how your voice uh, comes across, and you really and and that's the that's and, and mixing will never um, will never outweigh just an excellent uh, uh, recorded performance on the track. That's where it starts, you know, um, and the mixing, the EQ, and the compression. Reverb, delay, of all the other effects, all of that stuff just accentuates the original recording. It just enhances the original recording. That's where it starts. So, like, that's the importance of this vocal chain equipment. Um, but yeah, I'm gonna have some more stuff coming soon. Um, who knows? I may even um, throw a couple up now. I don't know. But hey, thanks for watching. I'm kind of rambling now. You guys have a good one. Um, let's keep building and growing. Let's get it.